Um, so why is this a problem? Uh, this is a problem because historically, the way cities have worked is as they get bigger and as it becomes more uh, more valuable to live close to centers of activity, um, they've compensated by building more density. So if you have a lot that, say, is worth a million dollars, you could a build a single family home on it and sell that home for about a million bucks. Or you could build like five apartments on it, or condos, and sell them for 200000 And obviously, that's like simplifying. But actually, in like the dynamics of it, it's actually not simplifying that much. Um, and so you can actually see this process sort of frozen in time in certain neighborhoods, like Hyde Park, where this is from, uh, where Hyde Park began in the 1800s as a suburb uh, out far outside the city with all single-family homes. And by 1900 or so, the city had grown up to meet it, and they started building apartment buildings, uh, even some apartment towers, uh, if you know the neighborhood. There's, there's a fair number of them from like before the Second World War. Um, Zoning stops that process. It says, no, you can't build any, any more densely. Um, but land prices keep going up. right? Demand keeps going up. And when that happens, prices go up. Um, so that's, that's like the economic theory side of it. But um, as you probably know, economic theory and like reality don't always intersect. Um, so a bunch of people have tried to look at whether this is actually what happens. Um, and uh, basically, the answer is yes. Um, I, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of things I could show you, but this is like one of my favorite graphs of any study I've seen. So this is uh, permits or housing construction in blue and prices in red uh, in Manhattan since 1950. And basically the idea here is that when you have a, a housing boom, when demand goes up, you can do one of two things. You can either build lots more housing, in which case prices should stay about the same, or you can tell people they can't build new housing, in which case prices will go up. And you can see three distinct housing booms in this graph. In the first one in the 1950s, uh, housing construction just explodes. Uh, it goes from something like 3,000 a year to 18,000 a year. Um, and the prices stay pretty much flat. Prices don't really budge that much. Uh, by the 1970s in the second boom, uh, housing restrictions are a lot tighter. And so we have a much smaller boom in construction, and you see prices start to creep up. Then finally, in the last boom, which is basically from 1990s through today, uh, construction barely goes up at all, and prices go through the roof. This is Manhattan. Manhattan is obviously not like a lot of other places, but you could make a chart like this for almost every uh, desirable part of an American city since 1950. Uh, and as a result, when prices go up, uh, people who can't afford them have to leave. So we get the sort of classic narrative of gentrification. So this is, for example, in West Town in Chicago. This is like Bucktown, Wicker Park, Ukrainian Village. Um, in the 90s, this became a really, really hot area. Lots of middle class people and, and wealthy people start moving in. And you have a corresponding exodus of the low income, right? almost mo more than one for one. We're pretty familiar with this narrative, although we're not always familiar with the idea that it's because of uh, supply. 